can uh, can you please keep uh, uh, on mute so if anyone have questions right you can just ping me or you can ask me at the end of the session okay so i'll be um, if uh, if you hear any disturbance you can just keep yourself on mute okay so no issues okay <laughs> so uh, we'll start we'll just see today uh, what are all the concepts that we will cover as part of this training and uh, we will just see uh, we'll start with data warehousing basics then move on to dimensional modeling then we'll start with obi practice labs okay so this will be our uh, course uh, plan so with our basics okay so now uh, we'll be discussing with dw concepts first then we have something called dimension modeling and then we'll start with obi architecture for 11g and then we will start with building repository for OBIE then we will move on to analyzing analysis and dashboards so building repository involves a lot of other steps as well okay so we can see build repository we have some pdf where we have a few topics under it okay i'll just show you how it is so uh, we have something called repository basics building the physical layer in a repository so we have so many topics uh, under repository itself we have building business and uh, model and mapping layer we have presentation layer validating a repository managing multiple logical table sources and so on like configuring higher dimensional hierarchies uh, creating variables okay so how to uh, uh, configure uses tracking there are different concepts in obae okay so all the concepts will be discussed as part of a repository building and then we will slowly move on to there is something called create analysis and dashboards okay so which is purely with respect to user interface okay. so we will we'll start with uh, repository first because repo repository is the place where you develop all your metadata about your data warehouse and everything and then we will slowly move on to our analysis and dashboards which covers topics So, <clears throat> create analysis and dashboards. Uh, this involves uh, this involves topics like uh, working with business intelligence analysis, filtering data using analysis, selecting and grouping data for analysis. So, this is completely with respect to UI. You are creating analysis, saving it as a saving it as a report and bringing that into uh, to a dashboard page and displaying it to a particular user. Hi. Chanikya, can you please make me the organizer? Yeah, sure, Smita. And you can be on mute, okay, if you have any questions. Later, uh, at the end, you can ask me, okay? Fine. So, we... We'll, yeah. Uh, so we just started uh, with uh, the course content okay for uh, D, uh, dw as well as obae okay so i was just uh, showing uh, what are all the topics that we are going to cover as part of this train okay so now uh, and access to the servers will be given to each of you 
like already you think, I think a few people have it. Uh, we have VMs and we'll have our uh, VPN set up on your machines and you will be given access to the remote boxes. You can log into the remote boxes and practice the labs accordingly. Okay. Uh, and if you have any concerns, you can ask me in the next day in the session. Okay. So, uh, with training along with practice will be taken care. So, if you have any issues, uh, you, you can keep practicing. If you feel, uh, if you have any issues or anything, you can come back to us on the next day of the session and you can ask us uh, all your questions. Okay. Next. So, we will just uh, start with uh, what is the data warehousing, what is OLTP system. So, what are all the different types of uh, data warehouses or uh, data warehousing concepts are there and what is the dimensional modeling and then we will slowly move on to our OBI architecture and then we will proceed further. Okay. So, let me give you a brief idea about uh, this one, OLTP system, how uh, it acts, where ETL comes and how your data warehousing plays an important role. Okay. So, Chanakya just, uh, uh, which means this data warehousing also helps to understand the OBI? Uh, see, uh, it's, uh, okay, any reporting needs to be done on top of a data warehousing. So, OBI is a reporting tool, right? So, you need a warehouse okay. to make reports. So, you need something called analytical processing system, so which can hold all your tables your dimension tables as well as your fact tables so that you bring in those tables to your OBI repository and start making the reports. Okay? Fine. So, we will just see how our OBI, where ADL comes, where OBI comes and what is an OLTP system. Okay? And uh, how your reporting uh, is been, uh, has prominent role in business dish. Okay, so uh, we have a transactional system or OLTP system, then we have something called ETL, Extraction, Transform and Load, which will load the data into our data warehouse. Okay, then comes our OBIE, which displays reports to the users. Okay, so here we have something called OLTP system. So, just to give you a brief idea about, about your OLTP system, you can just think of uh, an e-business site, right? Maybe Amazon or maybe eBay or anything or any reservation, ticket reservation, uh, uh, ticket reservation application. Okay. So, which handles your day-to-day -day operations is called an OLTP system. Okay. And uh, this trans transaction processing system should be very faster, very efficient as well. So, you cannot store more data in your OLTP system databases. So, any system, maybe a OLTP system or an OLAP system, what it can do? It can store all its content on top of a database, right? In a database, you should store each and every data or every record. But to handle all these day-to-day -day activities, because if you take an example of Amazon, uh, there will be uh, millions of users which will, uh, uh, who will be accessing the site at the same time. So, concurrent users will be very high. In that case, if you are storing data from year 1 till date, okay, so if all the historical data has been stored in our OLTP system itself, then obviously the query performance reduces because of the number of records, right? And if the query performance reduces, obviously what happens? The time taken to complete a particular transaction is affected. If the time taken is affected, what means? What, the, what what does that mean? It is impacting 
your business actually so you will you will be irritated if you are not getting the uh, results faster right so no one wants to wait for so much time to complete a particular transaction they want everything to happen faster right so your oltp systems are designed in such a way that the, uh, it will be supporting more number of concurrent users and it will store very less data okay and it is more normalized and the uh, number of tables involved in a join will be more and there will be different types of joins as well in your oltp systems like there will be one to one relationships also and there will be one to many relationships whereas in warehousing mostly we will see one to many from a dimension to a fact table we will see one to many relationships okay one to one very rare okay and next we, we have something called etl that is called as extraction transform and load so we have so many tools here like uh, informatica is the most uh, common tool which is used in our etl now but now oracle has come up with oracle data integrator also which is coming along with our ba apps okay so wh what is apps apps is nothing but pre built informatica map uh, not informatica mappings i can say mappings as well as workflows which can perform your etl operation along with your data warehousing tables okay all the ba tables also will be readily developed by your oracle and even your rpd your oba rpd which is used suppose say you say consumer goods application so all the pre built mappings and workflows which can bring in data from your oltp system and put all the data into your warehousing are readily developed what you are doing is mostly 70% of the uh, rpd as well as your uh, mappings and workflows are already there you are just customizing them okay so uh, you may have very few customized tables mostly you will be using all the tables which is provided by your uh, uh, which uh, what you can say the uh, person who uh, supplies your data warehouse okay mostly it will be oracle we will be dealing with oracle data bases here okay now your extraction transform uh, transform and load what does it do it takes data from multiple sources so it may be not only one oltp system suppose say if your data is being uh, put into a different suppose say sap system maybe uh, microsoft server anything different types of databases okay all those data is brought in to a common area called staging area so your staging area will be a replica of your warehouse okay so in etl itself before warehouse and before in, uh, in between warehouse and etl we have something called staging area okay so this staging area will have data uh, almost uh, similar to the of your warehouse tables then all the data is been loaded to your data warehouse now so uh, what does your etl do so th there will be generally two types of mappings here one is source dependent extraction that is called sde mapping so this phase involves getting the data from your oltp system so let me put it in some bigger way so SDE is nothing but source dependent extraction which gets data from your oltp system okay and puts into your staging area suppose say your olt uh, just uh, let me show you how uh, your source tables and how your warehouse tables with some common naming convention suppose say uh, if your source table or oltp system table is like this yes prod int which is a standard table for your product okay so not all the oltp systems have like this it is up to you some tables can have something like this sf underscore 
prod underscore int something like this okay uh, it is up to the source system notation okay now then we have warehouse tables as w underscore product with either it is a dimension table or it is a fact table correspondingly uh, we will just make a, a suffix with d or f okay and similar way your staging tables will be like this product underscore d s so your s represents that the table is a staging table okay right so uh, before bringing your data to your warehouse table you have something called staging table and all your source data in your ste mapping is been extracted and put into your staging area and daily your staging area will have the most current data it will not store any historical data only current data for in a particular day the data which needs to be loaded will be present in your staging area after that uh, when the new etl session begins all the data will be lost in your staging area and again we will bring all the current data and put it there and uh, put the same data into your warehouse okay so we have one more time this is from oldp to your staging area and next we have something called sil mappings which is nothing but your source independent load okay so here the data is loaded from staging area to your data warehouse okay so here from w product ds to w product d okay so uh, this is just an example of a staging area table to your warehouse table like this and not only one table is involved you have multiple tables in all the phases right and you have many transformations which is which are supplied in informatica okay like source qualifier transformation joiner aggregate transformation okay expression transformation update strategy many things okay so as of now we are not going to teach anything in informatica because we really don't need for us okay this is just the process that happens from your oltp system to your data warehouse okay but where does oba play an important role so we are really not worried how the data is being populated okay so our, see we should have an idea that is pretty good but mostly our concentration will be on obae part okay so what is a obae obae stands for oracle business intelligence enterprise edition so now the latest version is 11117 okay and you have number of patches okay so you have different types of reporting tools in market okay so oracle is providing obae okay so which is uh, oba which was like cbel analytics before now is been uh, named as oracle business intelligence and previous version was 10g now it is 11g okay now in future they are coming up with something called 12c so which is for cloud okay but as of now we can see that oba 11g is the uh, 11g uh, is in market and all the most of the companies are implementing it and you have something called tableau i'm just giving you a brief idea on reporting tools and uh, ibm has something called cognos okay even uh, cognos is a reporting tool okay uh, you have different types of uh, tools even sap has bos business objects also have uh, do the same reporting concept okay so what does your reporting tool do they they take metadata uh, we take all the table and of uh, dimension tables and fact tables into our rpd which your reporting tool provides okay there we design joins between dim uh, dimension table and a fact table make bring all the objects into your application 
then display the values to users in form of reports as well as dashboards okay so OBA comes here so I'll explain you again in detail while explaining about OBA architecture I'll explain you about OBA architecture this is just a brief idea how, how from your source system to your OBA how your flow looks okay so here comes your OBA for your reporting so you can just integrate all your applications like this so now you you will just have a brief idea uh, in what all the phases your So you can just have a brief idea how your flow is. Okay. So your OLTP system is day-to-day -day transactional system and your ETL on daily basis. Uh, generally what we do, generally in the on-site timings, in the night. Suppose mostly claims will be from US, right? Or either from US or UK, mostly. So uh, generally what, what an ETL team does, ETL team loads data into your warehouse on daily basis. So, if the client is from US, they are, uh, you are nine times. We will handle, the offshore team will handle of loading data into your warehouse tables. Okay, so by the time when the business users come uh, to office in the next day, all the latest uh, uh, data till yesterday should be present. Okay, so uh, ETL is like this. And your OBIE should be able to deliver the reports uh, uh, directly to emails, uh, directly through emails to the users as well as we have application for OBA as well which will display the reports also. Okay, So this is just a basic idea, very basic uh, of how your OLTP to your OBA, how your flow is. Okay? Now, so from uh, uh, now we will not discuss anything here. So we'll start with DW concepts, okay, and then we'll move on to OBIE practice. Okay, so to start with data warehousing basics, we have uh, we'll just see the differences between OLTP system and uh, OLAP system okay and we'll have just an idea of different uh, OLAPs okay uh, we are not going to uh, uh, discuss in detail about all other OLAPs we will be uh, discussing uh, we will be working mostly on relational online analytical processing system which is our OLAP where we have relational objects called tables where the data is stored and we will define joins between all our dimension tables as well as fact tables okay so I will explain you what is the dimension and fact after DW basics uh, class okay then you, uh, we can uh, uh, start with our OBIE labs okay fine so what is a data warehouse a data warehouse is subject oriented integrated, time variant and non-volatile collection of data in support of decision making process. Okay. So why this data warehouse came into picture? When you can when you can have data stored in OLTP system, why there is a need for your data warehouse? Okay. So we will just see. Now the definition says it is subject oriented. First it is integrated. Means from multiple sources, not only a single source, you can bring in the data into your warehouse using your ETL tool from multiple sources. Okay, so uh, that's the reason we call it integrated. So, what is subject oriented? Subject oriented is nothing but we will store uh, common information as a particular subject. Okay, so suppose say if you say sales related data, you put it to sales related tables marketing finance distribution so based on each topic 
or each subject, you will divide your tables accordingly and store your data. Okay. These are just concepts. You just have an idea. Okay. We will see uh, how the tables and everything present later. So these are just the concepts. Just have an idea on this. Okay. Now, so time variant. Okay. What happens? The data warehouse represents the flow of data through time. Historical data is kept in a data warehouse. Okay. So your OLTP system in general will not store any data more than 90 days. If suppose say if some clients may store it till one year also in even in OLTP systems. But not more than that. Because obviously it reduces your performance. Okay. But uh, with your warehouse it is not like that. Okay. Uh, we will store even for 10 years also. Okay. And after 10 years we may retire some uh, uh, this one. Uh, generally we will take it for 3 years, 4 years, 5 years even uh, some applications uh, for some clients we still go for 10 years also. Okay. It is up to the business requirement. So for how many years they want to maintain data, they will maintain data for so many years and they will make analysis based on the uh, uh, data which is available for all the 10 years. Okay. Whereas your OLTP system cannot provide the same information. It can only look at limited data. Even the limited data to get uh, to make a particular business decision, it's very, very complex because not a single table is involved in making your report. There will be multiple tables if you are doing it in OLTP system. Just for product alone, if you take a particular source system, there will be many uh, extension tables as well as source uh, direct base tables involved. Okay. Suppose say uh, you take an example of uh, where I came across civil source system. For product alone, you will have something like this. Yes, product. Yes, prod baseline. Yes, prod int underscore x, which is an extension table. Prod int underscore xm, which is one is to m related with product in table. Okay, and uh, you have uh, you will have yes, prod line item table. So like this, you have number of tables in our OLTP system to provide each and every uh, information. Whereas your warehouse does not include all these tables. Okay, all these tables information, you will have it under W product D. So this is the table which will store all this information. So just imagine the query how it is convenient with W product D. If it is a single table, maybe any table. If it is a single table, what you write? You select star from a particular table. If suppose if you are involving six tables, how should you write? You should write it as left out join S prod in S prod baseline on a particular car. Again with S prod index INTX on a particular car. So the query complexity obviously increases. So when the query complexity increases, obviously your database performance reduces. Right? And also you, you don't have even all the data in your OLTP system. You don't maintain any historical data in your OLTP systems. Right? So it is purely your uh, data which will support day to day activities. Right? So we'll just proceed. So this is time variant. Then you have something called non volatile. So if a data is entered into your warehouse, this will never be removed. Okay. So always it is growing. Near team history is continually added to it. Okay. So, okay. So must support terabyte databases uh, and multiple multi process read only database for data analysis and query process. Okay. Whereas if your OLTP, OLTP system or transaction system is read only, can you make any operation? Obviously no. Your OLTP databases should support all the DML operations. You go enter into a ticket reservation system, you uh, make ticket uh, reservation on a particular day. You feel that you want to cancel it. Next day you go cancel it. 
on the third day again you go and you update it with a new date right if you want to book the same ticket on a new day you go and create one more record so as a user user is directly able to put some data into your transaction system the same data is been entered into your table whereas your warehouse tables are read only okay none of the administrators will allow you to modify any data which is present in a warehouse okay because if you start doing that all the data is been corrupted or you there is a chances that all your data is lost by mistake if you are doing some delete or truncate operation it's gone right mostly it will be we, we will be doing select on your warehouse not more than that. okay so that is the reason we are calling it as read only database for database analysis and query processing so we have some uh, brief uh, idea on oltp systems like uh, it will uh, perform all the dma operations and has a large number of concurrent users the number of users who uses your oltp systems are very very high they will be in lakhs or in millions whereas the number of users for your olap system or your data warehouse are very very minimal right hardly in hundreds top management people managers team leads right business analysts they will be looking at your warehouse or reports no one else will be looking at your reports none of the users will be looking at your reports right no user uh, will have an idea on your business it is your organization and it is uh, your management who has some idea on the business activities which are happening and they are the people who want to take an effective decision if they feel that a particular product is not performing well in the market they will retire it they will come up with a new concept or create a new prod uh, product develop a new product and release it into the market right so you can have region wise sales product wise sales uh, and revenue with a particular sales representative like that so you have all the information tracked in your data warehouse next highly normalized with many tables generally oltp the, uh, the number of tables in your oltp systems are very very high because it is a mostly normalized third normalization form okay there are different normalization forms okay but just uh, keep in uh, idea that what is a normalization means it avoids repetitive data or redundancy okay to make it more independent you keep dividing the tables okay so every table will have a primary key foreign key relationship with other table in your oltp system and each and every table can be uniquely identified using your primary key so there are different uh, types of features okay it has more atomic data means the any information in your table cannot be further split so to that level they will be uh, dividing the data in your oltp systems okay these systems are typically used for order entry such as retail sales credit card validation atm transactions and so on there are any uh, day to day activity that you do is called a transaction processing system okay so what is analytical processing system is a data uh, database which is aggregated historical is nothing but a data warehouse okay so there is no difference between your olap or a data warehouse just different terminology that's it okay and typically denormalized with fewer tables you have very less number of tables here you will pull in all the relevant information to a single table in your data warehouse okay next so why do you need uh, olap need for more intensive decision support system okay and the characteristics involve advanced database support easy to use uh, end user interface multi dimensional data analysis so you can bring in data from multiple uh, uh, data sources okay now we'll just see the differences between your oltp system and olap system characteristics is this is for operational processing like your day to day activities whereas this is for your analysis okay and your user uh, users will be like uh, in on oltp systems uh, there will be a lot many number of users any user can perform data on this whereas on oltp systems or dw systems only experienced professionals 
or like who has more uh, insight of your warehouse can work no other normal people cannot work they don't know what you are doing how you are storing data and everything okay and function is day to day activity whereas this is for decision support data which is stored in oldb system is current data whereas in oap system it is historical data and view is for uh, detailed flat and relational here whereas summarized and multi dimensional db design is for application oriented whereas oap db design is for subject oriented purpose and uh, this is simple transaction this is just to support uh, complex queries access is read write and oap systems mostly it is read access so all these points we just discussed and number of records uh, in oldp systems will be will be in very minor like even thousands or lakhs but whereas in oap systems it is in millions okay number of users for oldp systems may be in thousands or lakhs whereas in for oap system it is hundreds okay only business management will be using it uh, when it comes to database size your oldp system database size will be minimal because you will be only storing concurrent uh, daily uh, very less number of records okay to support day to day activities whereas your oap system since it stores uh, for nearly 5 to 10 years of data you go for your uh, the database size will be obviously very very high okay and the priority here in oldp systems is high performance and high availability mostly you should none of the applications front end applications will be brought down right imagine if amazon site is going down for half an hour so so much business is lost so once the business is lost it cannot be retained back so it's very very risky to bring down your system whereas your oil oil app system can be down for many number of days there won't be any business impact it is only purely for decision making even if it is down that really does not matter okay you can still make queries on your warehouse and give the report or else what you can do you can take some time to bring it up because it, it really does not affect your business okay so here the main thing is uh, user uh, something uh, something like your query performance mostly in uh, your oap you will be just seeing about your query performance Uh, always you will be looking for various alternative approaches to improve the performance of your query in oap because obviously it want to handle a large number of data sets right next so need for data warehousing when we when you have oldp database what is the need for your data warehousing so this has so many uh, answers like better business intelligence for end users reduction in time to locate access and analyze information consolidation of disparate information sources strategic advantage over competitors right so you can analyze your own data and you can keep making changes to your products you can innovate your business style to improve your business okay faster time to market for products and services because you will be doing even forecasting suppose if you feel that a particular product is doing very good in summer season you develop that more and if you feel that a particular product has very good uh, market in a particular region suppose say uh, california they like uh, suppose when you go for water bottle suppose say if you are working for uh, uh, suppose say uh, for a water bottle company and i think you have different types of water bottles in market right suppose if you feel that uh, a particular brand is performing well in canada you put supply that brand to that uh, location if you feel a particular brand is doing good uh, somewhere in stanford or texas something there so you put all your uh, bottles there so it is of no use right if a particular product is not getting sold in a particular region it is of no use just shipment cost all those costs will be wasted so instead of that if you are targeting with a particular product on a particular area you will be your business will be much more improved as well as efficient right and reduction in demand on uh, to generate reports okay so demand on information sources to generate reports so you will be reducing time obviously okay next 
So why data warehouse? Unavailability of tools and techniques for acquisition of data from various sources for answering business questions and making decisions in earlier days. Before, this warehousing concept was not there. I think this came in 1982 or something. Okay. So the concept is proposed because when there were a lot of uh, sources present, each and uh, a similar, uh, same organization can maintain hundreds of sources and uh, all those data is not at all integrated to make a particular business decision. All right? So then warehousing concept came into picture, all the relevant data is put into data sources. Slowly they kept modifying the data warehousing concepts. Then uh, now we have something called relational overlap systems uh, where uh, we have uh, dimension tables and fact table concept and we are storing data into them and making some reports. Right? So it is slowly a uh, continuous improvement from the olden days. Right? So th that is the reason they came up with data warehousing concept before. Okay? They felt very uncomfortable with multiple sources. So they thought there should be a place where all the data can be dumped in. So they came up, came up with the data warehousing concept. And remember that data warehousing is not a technology, it is just a concept, okay? So data warehousing is just a concept. You will have tables like this, you will have tables like this. This is what a data warehousing says. Everything will be stored on your database only. Whether it is a front-end system or whether it is a data warehouse, anything, everything should be stored on top of a database, right? It is just your table and the column information which will change and the join information which will change, right? The number of tables which will change. The, the, but what it exactly, uh, how the uh, uh, things are uh, differentiated is based on concepts. When you say OLTP systems, you have more number of tables and complexity is high. When you say warehouse, the less number of tables, denormalized. That's it. So before it was uh, inflexible for report generation uh, and Time lag in accessing information at a central place, at a single place when you want to get data, it's uh, it's very difficult. It's time taking process before. So that is the reason why it came up, came up with data warehouse. So and, and also how to handle different types of business queries, like what is the sales distribution region wise, uh, who are profitable customers. So all this if you want to check it, you have to go for your analysis, data analysis only. So, which is handled in your data warehouse. Next. So, why data warehouse, why not OLDP? So, all the time we were discussing all this. So, your benefits of data warehouse, you know this. Flexible information access, high availability, ease of use, focus on information processing, information based for knowledge discovery, everything. So, a lot of benefits you have with your data warehouse. Okay. So, mostly we will be using it for data analysis. Right, so which will in, in turn, uh, in return, okay, uh, uh, I'll uh, slowly come to that Smith. as of now this is just a theory, right, so I'll just uh, slowly take an example of those things and I'll give you the information because I cannot show you now uh, how all these tables will present, okay. Next I'll uh, come up with dimensional modeling, right, that time. I will have a schema, we will see just how the tables are joined in your warehouse. Okay, all those we can see. It. All right. So just uh, this class is uh, mainly targeted to have some theoretical knowledge uh, on your warehousing concepts. Okay. Next. So how to build a data warehouse? We have to uh, identify keys which are more, uh, and business drivers everything and what are the risks and you have to uh, have survey information which needs to be identified functional and as well as functional requirements okay everything and evaluate and finalize your DW tool and technology okay finally you have to uh, take a, a particular technology and stick with it and start building your data warehouse maybe Teradata or your Oracle or maybe Microsoft SQL server anything so on top of any uh, database you have to design all your warehouse okay <clears throat> so de design target database schema build data mapping extract transform and cleansing and aggregation and summarization rules build initial data mart maintain and administer data warehouse so all this and you have some business terminologies like data dictionary so data dictionary is nothing but 
collection of metadata. So what are all the tables you have? So when you say describe dictionary, uh, you will have all your tables like user tables, user objects, okay, all tables, all objects. So what, what does that provide? That provides you all the list of tables that are present in your warehouse. So what is a data mart? A subset, uh, data mart is nothing but a subset of data warehouse which concentrates on one or more areas of your business. Okay. Suppose when you say uh, sales, in sales if you say orders, your orders is called a data mart. If you say service request, your service request is called a data mart. So all the service request information will be pulled into your service request. Okay, corresponding tables. Okay. Next. What is data mining? Mining is nothing but finding the data from your data warehouse. Getting the data from your data warehouse. Okay. So what is a data model? Data model is nothing but the different types of, uh, what are the different tables present, what is the join between them, what is the primary key, what is the foreign key, everything is called a data model. And your data model is very, very important in designing your RPD of your OBI. Without, without your data model, you cannot build any report. Alright? If you don't know what is the primary key, what is foreign key, how to join everything, there is no point in going for your reporting. Okay. So ODS is nothing but an operational data source which is a replica of your OLTP system and which uh, stores data for suppose say for 30 days or 40 days something like that. Okay. Very limited number of days. And normalization is the process of eliminating duplicate information which you generally do it in your OLTP systems. Okay. Next. So data transformation is nothing but uh, you are modifying the data coming from your sources accordingly you are making some calculations everything and putting into your data warehouse. So before reporting itself you can make some uh, changes to your data from your OLTP system and then put into your warehouse. Okay. So you can just see how the data is been pulled in from your uh, systems into your staging area then how the data is been put into your data model. Okay, so these are called different data warehouse components, right? So we can just uh, have a brief idea on all this. Okay, so how business transactions happen, how the data is been put into your staging area. So your staging area will contain data. So from staging area to it will be stored into your data warehouse. Okay. So after data warehouse, uh, your users will be able to see all the reports or analysis through your reporting. So each and every stage there is a tool involved, right? So from uh, when you say front end system, maybe it is a tool like suppose say if it is a Siebel, uh, maybe it is a SAP ERP application or uh, even suppose say BPM, uh, any business process management application, anything. So any uh, front end application which can support your business, okay? Then uh, your data warehouse, how it, uh, it may be any da uh, database like Oracle or Teradata or anything. And how your ETL is handled through Informatica or through ODA or through Pentaho, any uh, different tools. And how your uh, OBI uh, uh, reporting is handled through Cognos or SAP BIOS or OBI, anything, or TabView or ClickView. So uh, different types of reporting tools are there. So through any tool you can handle it. So each and every stage you have some tools and it is up to you to decide a particular tool at each stage and proceed with your design of your data warehouse. Okay. Next. So you can have different ETL tools. You have Informatica, IBM Virtual Warehouse, Oracle Warehouse Builder like this. And for OLAP servers you have Oracle Express Server, Hyperion SBS, IBM DB2, so all your databases. Uh, you have Holos, SAS, RM, MDDB like this. And your OLAP tools, you have Oracle uh, Express Suite, Business Objects, which is SAP BIOS, Web Intelligence, you have SAS, you have Cognos PowerPlay, and uh, you have MicroStrategy, you have MetaCube, like this. You have different tools. And TabView, OBI are not involved here. Okay. Uh, your data warehouses, again, uh, like Oracle, Info, Teradata, DB2, your data mining and analysis, you have a few tools like this. Okay. So you have different types of tools in market. Uh, you can decide on a particular tool and proceed with further analysis. So any tool can perform. It is uh, based on the concepts because 
few tools support cubes. Uh, Tableau supports cubes. OBA supports R O L app like this. So if your client data is very very minimal, go for cubes. Cubes are really very very faster. And if your client data is very huge, go for R O L app, which can store data in tables like uh, like whatever we are discussing now. Okay. If uh, you know, if they want performance as well as more data, go for a hybrid OLAPs. There are something called H OLAPs. We are not going to uh, discuss about that. So your OBA tool is something which can work on our OLAP, relational online analytical processing systems. Okay. So you can just see uh, different types of OLAP flavors, R OLAP, M OLAP, D OLAP and H OLAP. So we will see M OLAP. What is M OLAP? M OLAP uh, stores uh, each and every data as cubes. Okay. So all the calculations are uh, done before. So your reports will be very, very faster in M OLAPs. But the disadvantages of M OLAP is it can only store limited data. Okay. And requires additional investment because cube technologies are often proprietary and do not already exist in the organization. Therefore, to adopt the M OLAP technology, chances are additional investments and in human as well as in capital resources are needed. Okay. So whereas your R OLAP is the OLAP what we are discussing now because it stores all the data in tables and it can even handle uh, large number of data sets and disadvantages will be it cannot handle all the complex functionalities because your SQL is limited. Slowly they are coming with uh, inbuilt functions uh, even for your R OLAP concepts also but as of now it cannot support all and each and every functionality. Whereas combination of R OLAP and M OLAP is called a H OLAP, hybrid OLAP. Whereas you have cubes as well as you have relational sources. You have a cube, when you drill, the, drill, down, drill down through it, you have your relational tables, everything which is possible. And uh, last something is called D OLAP, which is very, very minimal uh, uh, for uh, your reporting, uh, for limited data. Generally, I didn't see much on D OLAP, any of the tools which go for D OLAP. Okay. Right. So this is just a brief idea on your warehousing. So we just saw what is uh, what is a warehouse, what is ETL, what uh, what is OLTP system and what is OBA. And uh, we just saw how this uh, uh, the different concepts of your OLTP and OLAP. Okay. So tomorrow we will see. Uh, from tomorrow, I think we will start class at your 9 o'clock, that is 6.30 our time. So is that fine or anyone have some issues? No issues, I'm fine. Okay. Ah, what happened to you? Okay. Uh, Praveen, uh, you have, Praveen has some question. I think he is asking what is the difference between your OLAP and DW. Both are same. There is no difference. OLAP and what? No, no, no. The difference between OLAP and DW is asking. Both are concepts only. It is not a technology. Okay. Both are same. Okay. And uh, can you provide the material? Um, can you share this PPT, Chanakya? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I'll be sending you this PPT. And uh, yeah. Uh, see, uh, my idea is like you you are not going to deal with any ETL or anything. We are uh, directly will be working on warehouse. Okay, we will be working on set of tables and then we will slowly proceed further. Okay, so just you, you should just have an okay, idea. If you have, of if you have any information related, you can pass it on so that maybe if we have theoretical 